Hello guys, Alien Phantom here, and today I'm going to show you how to make these dragon eyes that I like making a lot. I'm going to show you a few, and I have right here with me... Now here are three of them that I made. This one I made for my friend. This one I made for a costume that I'm making. And this one is the first one that I attempted to make, and I frankly don't like it that much, because unlike the red one, it's not hollow in the middle, which I will actually show you how to do that too. Now, you're going to need a water bottle, and... I prefer the ones that don't have the extra little hard to take off part because you're going to need the little part that keeps the cap on the bottle before you break it open. This little thing right here. And you can even use it to make this shape. You just have to pinch the edges of it. Now, to make these, you want to make sure that you put it on the tin foil because you're going to peel it off eventually. And you want to make sure that the spot that you have it at is nice and clean. There's no extra paint or anything there because it's going to ruin it if there's any paint there. So, you want to go and get your glue gun and your glue sticks. Make sure that they're nice and warm though, like you want to have them sitting out for a, at least a couple of minutes before you start hot gluing, because otherwise you're going to have lines in it that you can visually see. Now you're just going to take your glue gun and fill up the inside like so. You want to make sure that you get all the edges nice and well filled. And then once you think you got all the edges filled, you're going to want to just fill up a bunch right in the middle. It's going to flatten out a bit, but make sure that you don't do it too much, because when it dries, which is doing right now, it might mess up if you have too much hot glue in there. And sometimes you have to actually tilt the hot glue to make sure that it dries. Most of it has to be at the center. Now, I do believe it's completely dried. Yep. If your finger doesn't get stuck in it, which isn't always the best way to check if it's dry or not, because you will get fingerprints in it and that will ruin it, but it's one way to check. You just need to peel it off, and now, as you will see, this one is actually messed up, so I'm going to have to do it a second time. If you can look and you see that there's a bit of a ledge coming out of the actual round bottle cap thing, you'll see that it's oozing out and that's not what you want. So attempt number two. And this one's nice and done. You want to go and get your black paint and your glow in the dark. Depending on how you want to do it, if you want the middle to glow, you want to cake on as much glow in the dark paint as you possibly can. And you want to put several layers of it. For this one, I only did two. Just 
just gotta let it dry. Once it's done drying and you're satisfied with how much glow the dark paint you put on, you put the black paint on the back because it will make it look nice and dark. Like a pupil. Next day, you're gonna wanna put some more black paint because you're gonna wanna put a second layer of that. It's not gonna look completely covered. Now, as you can see here, you can do it two different ways. You can make the middle glow in the dark, or you can make the outside glow in the dark. I think it's not really the best idea to make both glow in the dark, because it just seems odd to have both the outside and the inside glow in the dark. Now, you can make a little bit of the outside glow in the dark, just for some extra detail, which I will be showing later for the one that I'm currently working on, not this one that I'm painting at the current moment. And I am kind of a klutz, you'll see me drop these a lot and have to repaint. Now they both dried, and as you can see the glow in the dark dries nice and clear, so it doesn't ruin the look at all. And you're going to want to go and put down your paints in the order that you want. Now in case if you don't know which one's darker or not, this is also a nice reason to put them all down right at the beginning, but if you put them down at the beginning they tend to dry. And I did lose some of the footage of me putting the paints out, so it just kind of jumps into applying the paint. But you just pretty much do it like I'm showing, and I also lost some of the footage for putting the first layer on, but you do want to do two layers for the first color. And now, for all the other layers, you want to make a nice little thin line, and preferably not drop it, but you want to put a nice thin line around it, and you make sure that you can still see the first layer. You want to be able to see that, because if you can't, then it ruins the entire purpose of putting that layer down in the first place. And as you can see, it jags up a bit, the paint. That's completely fine. That just adds extra detail to the eye, I feel. It makes it look and feel more real. Once it's done, what, and I also suggest that you don't touch it, I use my light to double check to see if it's dry or not, because you can normally tell if it's still damp by looking at it. <laughs> and yes, you just continue to do this till you get to your very last color that you want on the very outside, which you always want a really dark color on the outside, because like most irises, or, yeah, irises, like most irises, there's a very darker outline of them. And I honestly really like this green color. Now, moving on to the last layer, I was going to attempt to do it with the big one, but then I remembered, I just bought all these nice tiny brushes, so why not use them? I get like the thinnest one that I can to go and paint the outline, the um, very outside of the little plastic piece from the water bottle. And you pretty much just want to go and use that. Sometimes you want to put two layers depending on how dark you want it. Or if you can still see the other colors through it. You 
you want to put a little bit of extra on the outside of the little plastic piece. Just enough that it's visible. And I really feel like that gives it a nice little touch to it. Now when that's all dry, you take one of the lighter colors. You can go with a darker one too, you don't have to go light, but I like to go light. And you just kind of lightly put it on. You want to make sure that you don't have too much paint on either because then it will get too dark. But just kind of like feather it out like I'm doing here. I realize it's kind of hard to be exact like how I'm doing. I'm not doing it this fast. I have the video sped up a lot because I took forever doing this. And you want to take your time. You do not want to go too fast or it will end up being really sloppy looking. And something that I kind of had like the little inspiration to do I just thought it would be a neat little idea. Put green on the inside of that light purple that I have in there. And it kind of makes it pop a bit better, I feel. And then also, it doesn't seem like it's overwhelmed with that light purple color. It makes the colors blend a bit better, I feel. Like, I'm no fancy artist or anything, but this is the kind of stuff I like to do for hobbies, and I feel like it makes it look really nice. And doing these little lines does not take very long to dry, but I can't really reach the purple, and I got this cool little blotting sponge thinger. I don't know what it's actually called. <laughs> But I found it would probably look really cool if I did little spots with it. And I got that nice dark purple that I had and put little spots on the outside. You can't really see it much with this camera, but it looked pretty nice. And now I'm going to blot some a little of the dark paint on with the sponge as well after I washed it. It doesn't take very long for the little sponge blots to dry. It takes only a few seconds, but I do suggest you clean out your sponge really well and let it dry a bit because otherwise it deletes the colors a lot. Now you take these Perler X colors that I have and this color is green purple and in the light Depending on how you move the object, it will give off a green or purple shimmer, which looks pretty awesome. Now, I know it just looks like powder here, but if you see this stuff in person, it is so pretty. And as you will see, I'm also tapping off any extra powder that I get on the brush, because you do not need a lot of this. These Perler X's are really expensive, but you use next to nothing of it when you use them. Like, I've been using them like crazy and it looks like I haven't used any of it. It looks like I just opened them. But then again, I like making everything sparkly. Now I'm going to bring back out the one that I made for my friend. And I'm going to use the Perler X that is colored, I believe, pumpkin orange. And if you have any other projects out, you do want to get them away, especially if they're not finished yet, because this stuff sticks to anything, and the colored ones, you will definitely notice the color on the other ones when you get them on. 
and sometimes, which I do do a couple of times with these that you can't actually see, is I blow on them to try and blow away any excess dust that I do not feel like is needed. And now I'm going to use my Perler X Pearl White. Now this one I use for pretty much everything, and it is by far the one that I use the most. And even though it is kind of making it look a milky white color, it makes it shimmer a lot more than the other ones do that are just colors. Well, they're colors and sparkle. They're sparkly colors. Now, I also dust away what was in the middle of the eye, because I don't think the middle of the eyes tend to be too sparkly. Same one for this one. And then you once again want to dust away the middle. Now I want to get my Mod Podge. And you just kind of want to get a nice big paintbrush for this. And you just kind of want to cake that Mod Podge on as much as you possibly can and try to not get too many brush strokes in there. Like, you don't want it to look like you just put a paintbrush over top of it because it kind of makes it not look like an eye. It kind of makes it look weird because instead of the, like, nice glassy look to it, it looks like someone ran a paintbrush through jelly or something. I don't know, it's hard to describe, but it doesn't look as nice. And you want to try and get those edges also. But the edges aren't as important as the main body is. You can always do the edges in the back later. And that part I feel like it doesn't matter too much if it isn't lopped on a lot. And you just let that dry, and they should look like this. They're nice and shiny, and I'm going to show some footage of them glowing in the dark. And they look so nice. And, well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hope you have fun making them if you make them. If you do, send me some pictures. I would love to see them. And I hope you guys have an awesome day. Alien Vandom out.